So, Van, as we mentioned, Trump campaign wasting no time blasting Warren. She's now the eighth person, though, to mm -hmm. officially enter this race. It's the first time they've done that. How would you rate her campaign kickoff? And do you think she has now put the Native American heritage controversy behind her? I think that a gum is sticking to her shoe and it's going to stick to our shoe for a while. It's just a hard thing to get past. I think most of the press feels that they have a responsibility to mention it every time, as you just did. Um, and uh, I think that's going to, going to continue to dog her. What I do, what I am excited about, though, is that, uh, you know, she represents for a lot of progressive Democrats um, a fresh take on the Bernie Sanders phenomenon. In other words, Bernie Sanders has moved this party in a much more progressive <laughs> direction. Uh, some people, though, are not big Bernie fans. Some of those people really like the way that Elizabeth Warren talks about the middle class and talks about that, that middle class squeeze. You know, she uh, is, is one of our better storytellers. When you, you know, you, it's hard to soundbite her mm -hmm. because she often is telling the story of yeah. an American, She's telling the story of a mom, telling the story of a worker. And so these sound bites don't really capture the way that she really does connect with our audience. And there's a big bunch of people in our party who love her message and who love her policy agenda. Mm. Well, we're hearing from sources that Trump's fundraising email was designed to really boost donations. They see her as somebody who can do that. She's polarizing in yeah. their eyes. Um, but do you think that's all it was about, or do you think Trump really sees her as a threat? Oh, no. I think Trump really <laughs> hopes that she ends up being the nominee. Really? You can disagree with the framing of her as someone who's impersonated a Native American, tried to use race to get it. You can think that that's an inaccurate framing, but it's been a very successful framing. And as sort of a marketing trick, Trump has really turned that into gum on her shoe. Uh, really hard to get away from. And, you know, by her own admission, there could be more of this stuff to come out and resurface and keep reminding people that this was part of her past. I think the most generous way to see it is that she's not authentic. And that is a, mm. that's damning for, for voters. Voters see right through that. And, and so that's something she's gonna have to deal with for as long as she will be alive in this primary. I have to wonder, though, if it's something voters care about or if it's just something we're just the, Well, the polling, about. I don't know if the polling drills down on that. But in Massachusetts, she does not do well in the polls. Among Democrats, she's beat on a list of possible 2020 candidates by Joe Biden, Kamala Harris, right. Bernie Sanders. The list goes on and on. I just saw the last Washington Post ABC News poll. Donald Trump beats her among Democratic voters. And I want to talk a little <laughs> bit more about that in just a second. Yeah. But uh, as you point out, there's so many people in the Democratic field already and more who could be entering yeah. any day now, Van. How do people differentiate themselves, well, and who do you think has been most successful about doing that so far? Well, look, I think Kamala had the best start. Yeah. I mean, she, I mean, and I've known Kamala Harris for 20 years. I was not surprised. It was, it was a button-down, smart operation. Uh, no glitches, no, no stumbles, really. Uh, you know, people didn't like her answer on Medicare for All, but that's really the only cr criticism that, that you've heard. Um, you know, the thing about Elizabeth Warren, if she could get past this, she does have a track record of having gotten things done for working class people. I mean, she, she, she stood up to Wall Street. She actually got, you know, she got a real agency stood up, which is hard to do. And that agency has been, uh, if she could ever talk about it, has <laughs> done real good stuff uh, to help, you know, people who got credit cards not get ripped off. She, unlike a lot of the people, she really does have a track record of success. Uh, and uh, I just don't know if she's going to get a chance to talk about it. Mm. The challenge, I think, for all, everybody is early on, you get put into a different camp. Hmm, you're yeah. the black woman, the mm -hmm. black girl magic candidate. You're the African American, you're the Latino. Elizabeth Warren right now is the fake Native American candidate. Mm -hmm. And I think that, that that is really hurting her. And also, had she chosen to run four years ago, um, she might have won because there was clearly a hunger for somebody not Hillary Clinton right. in our party. Bernie Sanders got 47% of our vote in the primary. That's a huge, huge... Uh, a chunk of people to break away from the presumptive nominee. Had you had uh, her in there, she could have gotten some of those, those women and some of those progressives. Now you have to wonder, did she miss her opportunity? You just don't know. we got a whole nother year before anybody votes for anything. But she's got a challenge. Well, the Boston Globe thinks she missed her opportunity. They came out with a, an, an editorial against her candidacy not too long ago. But let's move bigger picture because mm -hmm. one person who seems to be resonating, who's not even in the race yet, <laughs> is Joe Biden. He's yeah. leading the pack in the le re most recent polling. Yeah. We put it up there with 50% of Americans saying they would likely support him for president. 
not only ahead of other Democratic candidates, but he's also beating Trump in this poll. There's obviously a lot of energy, Van, on the left, and more candidates we're seeing trying to really highlight their progressive credentials. Moderate Joe Biden, mm -hmm. somebody who has a history of bipartisanship from his work in the Senate, is not that person on yeah. the left. So what does that sort of he, polling tell us about what it, Americans, Democrats in particular, really want? It says that if you know somebody and you mm -hmm. like somebody, you don't care that much about their policy agenda. Yeah. In other words, some of these other people who are brand new, you know, they have to jump up and down and say, listen, Medicare for all 27 times in their speech and Green New Deal 97 times in their speech because they're trying to say, look, look, I'm in step with the party. When you're Joe Biden, you could just say, hi, I'm Joe. And you, you, you had me at, I'm Joe. Because he is a beloved figure in our party. He was Obama's uh, very loyal and very effective vice president. He's had his gaffes and his stumbles, so he's humanized to us. Authenticity, he, he, right? Authentic, That's exactly. Right. Authenticity. <laughs> he, you know, he, he lost his son, and that yeah. was a part of the heartbreak for us. So the thing is, you know, when you know somebody and you love somebody, you don't really care as much. And so I think he can defy gravity in this party in a way that others can't. I think, I mean, look, he's, you're right. He's a moderate. The energy in the party is going to the far left. He's someone who's lost a number of times. It almost defies logic, but there is a nostalgia, mm -hmm. not just for Joe Biden and the Obama era. There's a nostalgia from a guy who seems to accept and get people. Hmm. And even when I disagree with his policies, there's a lack of condescension. Hmm. There's a lack of judgment that, frankly, other progressive candidates um, can't can't unaffect. Yeah. Is he somebody that's that, authentic and that really reaches a lot of is, people? I mean, is he somebody anti-Trump Republicans would consider? I know for? a lot of. I, I won't say a lot, and this is anecdotal. This is not scientific. I know a number of Republicans who have said to me, "I could, I could vote for Joe Biden." Hmm. I, I keep hearing that about Joe Biden. The other thing I was surprised was to see Sherrod Brown, uh, who's you know probably the best Democrat you've never heard of, be po polling at 21. I uh, was at 21 percent, nipping on the you know on the heels of a, of a Cory Booker. Even that shows yeah. you something else is happening in our party. Sherrod Brown is a working class uh, a champion, Midwestern, yeah, Midwestern right. working class champion mm -hmm. for, for for the Democratic Party. I mean, this guy he'll he'll bring you to tears talking about a waitress. Yeah. I mean, who does that? And kind you of had stuff? a great conversation with him just the other the day week. on Van Jones Show. This week, you're talking to Julian, Julian Castro. Let's listen to what he had to say about Biden, real fast. I get the sense out there that people want a new generation of leadership. Mm -hmm. you know, I traveled a lot over the last few years, and especially during these last two years, supporting candidates in the 2018 cycle. And I don't, I don't say that as anything personal against one person. Mm -hmm. The sense that I get is that people want a new generation of leadership. Yes. And uh, in this race, you know, just speaking for myself, uh, I believe that um, I'm going to bring a vision for the country that represents the future. Do you think that Biden should maybe sit it out? I wouldn't say that. Why not? Uh, because uh, if he wants to run, uh, he certainly has a track record of, of accomplishment. Um, he served as the vice president. Mm -hmm. I think so many people respect him. Mm -hmm. uh, he would be a fantastic candidate. Yeah. So if he wants yeah. to run, he should. <laughs> that was a very humble answer. No, 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 no. I'm no, not don't, saying, don't set up. No, no, no. I don't, want, I don't want that feeling. Here's the question that I have for you, though. Why hasn't he seen the boost in the polls that mm -hmm. others who, I mean, he was one of the first to enter the race, right? Well, now you mentioned Kamala Harris. She enters the polls. She got a big boost. He yeah. hasn't. Why isn't he resonating? You know, uh, it's all about timing. <laughs> I mean, uh, some people may later on say Kamala peaked too soon. You never know. Uh, he's going to have to get out there and really work for it in Iowa. Um, he's an incredibly appealing human being. His interview, I, you know, he can be a little bit, you know, stiff. In the interview, he opened up. He talked about his family. There's, he's, he's got a story to tell. Uh, but honestly, we've never had a Latino uh, be successful in either party. Uh, I do think that that's something in the back of people's mind. Do you think, well, you know, can Latino versus Trump, is that a nightmare for Trump or a gift to Trump? We just don't know. I ask him that question. He has an amazing answer for it. Um, but mm -hmm. I just think that you, you, you've never seen the Democratic Party rally yet around a Latino candidate, and so he's going against that kind of gravity. Is it possible? I tell you, with him, it's possible because of that earnestness that he has. The, the same thing is his weakness of being like a, maybe a little <clears throat> bit like he doesn't light up the room. There's a trustworthiness that comes through in this hmm, interview okay. that I think could, over time, as all these stars jump up and down and get all the attention, you could have a little engine that could name Julian Castro. <laughs>